first realised I was ill because I started losing a lot of weight and I got like severe pain down my right leg. It was like a burning pain, a burning sensation. I had it for about a year and I started collapsing, like just getting on and off buses and things like that. I was just falling and I began to notice muscle deterioration in my leg. It was noticeable, you could look at me and notice it, that even in my jeans or whatever you would be able to notice that I actually had one leg bigger than another for the muscle deterioration. At the start when um, I first started going to my doctor I went because I was getting pains in my knee um, so I kept going back to him and he said to me that I was I was fine, he couldn't see anything wrong with me or anything like that um, and he gave me, he told me to go to Asda if I wanted painkillers and he told me I didn't have much time, he only had like six minutes or something with every patient they had so I would need to hurry up. He told my mum she was neurotic. And because I'd lost so much weight, obviously because I was unwell, he thought that I had maybe an eating disorder. So eventually he didn't want to treat me anymore, he gave me a number to go to a counsellor. It's probably the biggest, the best thing he did for me was telling me to change my GP and when the two weeks after that I had changed my GP I ended up getting diagnosed. When I first went to the doctor and they told me that I had a tumour, I know it sounds terrible, but I was like, thank God this isn't in my head, I'm not making this up, that I'm feeling this tremendous pain and I'm falling down, falling down for no reason, it's because I was not well and I had this tumour, there was a reason for it. I was 17 when I was ill, um, but I got diagnosed when I was 18, so it was really weird having to, all of a sudden I was bedridden and I couldn't get out of the house. When they said I had a tumour in my hip, I never thought for one minute it could have been a cancerous tumour. Obviously my mum had discussed it with me and um, my family that maybe it could be, but I never thought for one minute that a young girl, it, like, the likes of me, you always think you're not me, the likes of me would have a cancerous tumour. Because all my friends were going out and doing everything and getting on, being the way I used to be and for all of a sudden to be this kind of party girl and outgoing girl to be bedridden and either being in hospital every week or if you do, if you are well enough, you don't want to go out in case you catch an infection so you kind of do stay in, it's been like being in a bubble basically. I came in contact with Macmillan through my specialist nurse um, at the Beatston. She told my mum about Macmillan and I didn't really know much about it to be honest with you. Macmillan helped me because they supplied me with a cheque um, I think it was like £500 um, and my mum said with this cheque I could get a laptop but I didn't realise that they just gave you £500 I was like am I meant to pay this off when I'm not well? I didn't understand why they had been so generous to me It's easier to go on the computer and chat to somebody over the internet than it is to pick up the phone and when I was in the hospital or at home, I could talk to my friends and keep my friends informed of how I, how I was. And I didn't feel so out like my social network. I was talking to everybody, so I didn't feel so isolated anymore because I was still keeping in touch with my friends and still getting all the gossip and things like that. So I felt kind of normal again. I, I feel as if because I knew how much it helped me when I was ill, I feel really, I want to help Macmillan because I know the difference that they do make. So I try to get involved in as much as possible that I can because I know the difference it makes. For about a year there I did volunteering in the hospital that treated me um, after I got not well, which was the Beatston. I went there for a year, um, just every Wednesday I would go in with the information and support and I would talk to some of like the patients and just even give them information about the hospital or even just the smallest things, telling them where to go to get things um, to help them. So I felt as if that benefited me and I felt as if I hoped it also benefited other people as well. I hope they saw me as an inspiration because my story has turned out for the best because I don't feel you hear the good stories, you only hear the bad stories, so I thought people would maybe look at me as an inspiration. If people want to help Macmillan, I would say to just even the smallest penny or whatever, every little donation makes a difference and it all adds up and it does make a difference to people's life. I'm, I'm living it right now, that's what happened to me, so I know the difference that it makes and that's why I like to help the charity as much as I can and I would say to anybody else to do the same too.